Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are watching from. Ty Talk Sports here, and I am back with another NBA Finals prediction video. Game 4 is here, and we got just a little bit to talk about in regards to the previous game. The X-Factor players, the expectations, and the final prediction that we have always done here on Ty Talk Sports during these NBA Finals. So, for the game recap the first half was a back and forth physical battle Jokic got going super super early Jamal Murray got going early as well as I expected him to have a big game in which he did and then Miami was playing really well in the first half Jimmy Butler was able to get a few points uh, Caleb Martin had eight points in a matter of minutes and when it seemed like that he was finally going to be back and consistent everything fell downhill after the first half it was a really tight ball game going into halftime at 53 to 48 and then Denver just came out and they took over especially on the defensive end and even the score margin isn't too insanely uh big I mean Denver scored 29 points in the third quarter Miami scored 20 but at this point, it just continued, and it did not stop. Denver was in all-gas, no-breaks mode from the third quarter on. Jokic with a historic stat line of 30 points, 20 rebounds, and 10 assists. The first person to ever do that in the NBA Finals. He actually had 32 points, 21 rebounds, and 10 assists. I'm sorry. The the, the stat, the historic stat was 30-20-10. Uh, but a insane performance here from the Denver Nuggets. Jamal Murray... 34, he got it done. Christian Brown, the rookie out of Kansas, came in and he got buckets. Seven of nine from the field with 15 points. He had four rebounds, a lot of game-changing, game-winning plays. That's what you love to see out of your bench players. And for a rookie, he came out and he shined. He did not look back. So, what what is game four going to look like as in game three I talked about how I expected Miami to to carry the momentum that they had from game two but they did not I mean it looked it was a hot start for both teams Miami jumped out to an early lead but then it was just it just all fell apart unfortunately so what should we really expect to happen well Miami's a team who plays great when their backs are against the walls but this is the Denver Nuggets we're talking about here. I mean, this team has just dominated the Western Conference, and this finals has just looked like it has been theirs from the get-go, except for Game 2. I mean, Denver really has Miami's number now because they are locked in. They immediately went into the 305 and stole a game, and it was just an all-out dominant performance. I mean, they turned up defensively in the second half, and they limited... Everyone, I mean, the leading score was Jimmy with 28. The next closest was Bam with 22. But then apart from that, the next closest was uh, Cody Mart or Caleb Martin, excuse me, with, with 10. I mean, that's how well Denver stepped up. Um, I'm really expecting it to kind of go Denver's way, but it's not going to be this easy. I mean, I think Jokic is going to do what he's been doing all series. You can rely on Nikola Jokic to have a great game, to have a MVP type of game. I think what Miami is going to try and do, as we have talked about, they're going to try and make Jokic the scorer. Well, you know what? Jokic was the scorer last game, and it still didn't go well. I mean, apart from letting Jamal Murray get uh, 34, I mean, they did a really great job defensively. Jokic had 32. Jamal Murray had 34. The next closest was Brown with 15. Gordon with 11, and then Michael Porter Jr. continuing to struggle, only getting two points. KCP had six. I mean, Miami's playing good defense, but Denver's stars are here, and they're just dominating the series. And I think both of them are going to have another big game in Game 4. I could see both of them getting over that 25-point margin once again. I think Jokic could easily have a triple-double. That's what he's done all playoffs. I think he's going to carry it over again. And I'm looking to see who else is going to step up because apart from Jokic and Murray, like I said, this team is struggling. I'm really looking for Michael Porter Jr. to step up. And, and they're paying him $180 million to score two points in the NBA Finals. That ain't it, Chief. That ain't it. They're going to need the supporting cast to shine big in a big way because if Miami comes out and comes out playing, 
it, they're, Miami's a very tough team to beat when they're on a roll. And I think with their backs being against the walls and their team who plays well when they're in that situation, they're going to come out and they're going to come out hard. And they're going to keep on fighting. And they're going to come out and set the tone early. They're going to play with, um, with, with criticism. They're going to be critical of every mistake they make because when you go down 3-1 in any series, at that point, it feels like you're kind of in the rough. And that's really hard to come back from. Obviously, we haven't seen many teams come back from a 3-1 lead besides teams like the Cavs in 2016, like the Nuggets in the bubble. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of 3-1 comebacks in this league until recently. But that's still such a hard thing to do. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at Denver's away record. They're 19 and 22. Miami is 27 and 14. So obviously, when Miami plays under their lights, I mean, they play. I mean, they're obviously they're a better team. But Denver showed that they are the overall better team, no matter where they're playing, whether it's altitude or South Beach. Denver came out and showed us that they are not here for no re- for no reason. I mean, they're not. I'm really looking to see how Miami is going to respond. But if they don't, Denver will blow them out of the water. But I do expect Miami to respond. I really do. I expect Miami to come out. I expect them to get hot. But I don't think it'll last. I think it'll be another kind of one of these things where the first half goes great for Miami. Maybe they'll be up. But I do not see it as a game where Miami is going to last the full 48. I think this is going to be one of those back and forth games. I expect it to be close. I think this is going to be a physical matchup. It's going to be like some old school basketball where we see bodies going everywhere, hard fouls. I mean, Miami has everything to lose, honestly, at this point. And Jimmy Butler is a guy, when his team gets down, he is not going to hold back. We've seen the historic performances that Jimmy Butler has put up when he has his back against the wall. We all remember the, uh, the bubble where he was, it was game five, and he went on an insane tear that whole game for 48 straight minutes. And we all know the iconic picture, it's on screen now, of him laying down. I mean, I think Jimmy Butler will step up and have one of those games. He did not have a bad game at all in uh, game three. I mean, he had 28 points with four assists, two rebounds. I mean, they're not a terribly bad, efficient CY's game either. It went 11 of 24, one for four from downtown. Would like to see those three-point shooting numbers go up. But he's, that's never been something that he's done. But Jimmy Butler is going to take over this game. He's going to set the tone. He's going to bring the energy. That's just what Jimmy Butler does. Jimmy Butler steps up in big-time games. That's what you look, want in your big-time players, and he is going to do that. Now, my X-Factor player for both teams, for the Nuggets, I'm looking at, man, I'm, I'm looking at MPJ because you know that Jokic and Murray are going to come out, and they're going to do what they're going to do as they have all playoffs long. You, are, you do not need to worry about Jokic and Murray having a bad game. But you've had to worry about Michael Porter Jr. having bad games. He has struggled all playoffs. He went one for seven in this game. I think he went one for seven last game, five for 16 in game one. I mean, I don't think he scored more than 20 points this series. And when you pay a guy $180 million to shoot the ball, you need him to make it. That's my X-Factor player. You need him to step up, and you need him to step up in a big way. Because if he's going to play well, the Nuggets will blow out Miami. They will blow them out by 20 because, like I said, you know that Jokic and Murray are going to do their thing. You can rely on Aaron Gordon to come in and get you buckets. But for the amount of minutes and the amount of money that Michael Porter Jr. is making, you need him to step up in a big, big way. My X Factor for the Miami Heat, I've talked about him all video. Honestly, he hasn't gotten an X Factor yet, but Jimmy Butler gets the X Factor player. How is he going to step up? How is he going to respond? I expect him to set this tone early. I've talked about Jimmy Butler throughout the course of this video. There's not really much more I need to say. Jimmy's going to step up. Jimmy's going to do his thing. He is going to have one of those Jimmy Butler games. I know I said it last video, but this is that moment. This is Jimmy's moment, and this is where he is going to step up in one of the biggest ways we have seen these playoffs. That's what I fully expect. I also have a few predictions from Devin who wanted to chime in for his X Factor player he's going with Gabe Vincent again uh he only had seven points last game and he went two for ten from shooting and he needed to be efficient and obviously they got beat by a wide margin Gabe Vincent played very well in games one and two and that's what you needed him to do but he didn't deliver he didn't deliver and he Devin 
talked about how to be a great player, you can't just show up for two games. you got to show up for all of them. And they need Gabe Vincent to step up in a big way. He needs to knock down three-point shots. He's got to be efficient, especially in playmaking. If he plays well, Miami is going to play well. And for the Denver Nuggets, he's got Jamal Murray. Obviously, he showed out in game three, especially in the stat box. And, it, and the scoreboard and the box score showed it. And if he comes to play, he says Miami will be in trouble. And if Jamal struggles, then the Heat will win. And I fully agree with that. As you talked about how they try to make Jokic the scorer and take away his playmaking ability, it's really hard for Denver to win basketball games, especially if they, no one else besides Jokic can't get going. And a must-win game for both teams, he can't – show up acting like he has no sense of control and Jamal has to show up again for what he did in game three has to show up in game four so for our final predictions for me and Dev who is not here but still is here I'm going to be taking the boys from the mile high city to take a controlling lead of this series it's going to be a close one it's going to be a low scoring game I'm going to go with 101 to 95. I think this is going to be a physical battle, lots of fouls, lots of physical play, and I really expect it to be a low-scoring, fun matchup. For Devin, he also has the Denver Nuggets winning in a close one. It's going to be 107 to 103, his prediction. This is going to be a fun matchup, and this could really go either way. Let me know what you think here on Tide Talk Sports. And if you did enjoy, drop a subscribe. 97.8% of my viewers are not subscribed. That is a bright spot, though, because that means there is so much room for growth here on this channel. But if you're not subscribed, hit that button, guys. All it takes is a few seconds of your time, and it helps me push my videos out to so much more of this platform. And all you guys have to do is just hit that button. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, I'll see you here next time. Let me know who you think is going to win game four. And until next time, this is Tide Talk Sports signing off. See you guys.